Disturbingly, turbulence seemed to rear its head wherever scientists looked, although little was known of how it occurred. For decades, the theories proposed by the Russian physicist Lev Landau seemed the closest to providing the answer. Landau had the idea that turbulence would occur through a sequence of transitions. Each transition would bring a new frequency into the motion, so the, the flow would become more complicated. And after many of these transitions, then the flow would appear very complicated. But fundamentally, it would be no different than it would be after one transition. It would still be described by a few frequencies. We had in mind testing this idea by looking in detail at the transitions to see each new frequency appear. It was hoped that Landau's transitions could be made to show up as patterns forming and dissipating in a thin layer of liquid trapped in the gap between two carefully controlled rotating cylinders. To show the patterns more clearly, tiny flecks of aluminium were added to the liquid. The question was, would the transition to turbulence be ordered, appearing at certain clear frequencies, as Landau suggested, or not? We saw that there was indeed a transition where a frequency came into the motion, some waves. And then another transition where more waves came into the motion. But then the next thing that happened was as we increased the speed of rotation of the cylinder, the next transition was one in which the flow became irregular, chaotic. We were very excited by this because uh, Landau was uh, one of the great men of 20th century physics and he has enormous intuition into physical phenomena and he was rarely wrong so we, we recognized that uh, if we saw something that was different from what Landau had expected that uh, this, this was uh, something that would be exciting and what we can show is that, that the flow really does have this property when it becomes irregular. That is, that the flow beyond this point of transition becomes inherently unpredictable. You can predict the behavior for the short period of time, but the long-term behavior is inherently unpredictable. No matter how accurately you measure the velocity or whatever the parameters are, you cannot predict the long-term behavior. What Harry Swinney's group have seen and measured are the milestones that occur on the unpredictable road to chaos. For many modern technologies, understanding how and when those milestones will occur is crucial. Whether it's ensuring that the flow of air over an aircraft's wing remains smooth, or that turbulent mixing with the atmosphere will occur for certain industrial emissions, a knowledge of the onset of chaos is vital. Surprisingly, it's now clear that we need look no further than our own bodies to find turbulence and chaos. Not only can turbulent blood flow damage blood vessels, but it can even affect the electrical activity of the heart itself. We have often seen the rhythmic electrical pattern associated with the normal ECG. But when the pattern changes, when the electrical rhythm fails, the heart fibrillates. This quivering, chaotic activity is more familiar to us as a heart attack. However, research in the USA on the ECG patterns of animals indicates that just before the heart begins to fibrillate, the normal pattern changes, displaying alternating high and low beats. When the research team at MIT first saw these new patterns in 1983, they called them electrical alternans. About that time, uh, uh, Mitchell Feigenbaum uh, came, gave a lecture to the MIT physics department on period doubling. And uh, since the pattern that we were noticing had a period which was twice the period of the normal ECG, which is just the normal interbeat interval, uh, it occurred to us that perhaps this was a period doubling uh, which may be the first step in the progress to an apparently chaotic uh, behavior. The immediate question was whether the period doubling that we had observed was in fact the, 
first in a cascade of period doublings. What we did was to take 25 studies and to uh, record on those patients uh, surface, the surface electrocardiogram and to use our computer algorithms uh, to determine whether electrical alternators were, were, was present in those patients at, to a significant extent. Um, we found that uh, in about 90% of the individuals that he was able to induce serious arrhythmias in, indeed, electrical alternators uh, was present. Uh, we would hope that we would be able to detect electrical instability, you know, on the you know, order of six months or a year uh, before an individual would, uh, you know, might sustain ventricular fibrillation. But this is really projecting far into the future. As I say, this research is an early stage and we're in the process of, of testing some of these hypotheses and, uh, you know, the technique is not, is not in general clinical use at this time. Like Jupiter's red spot, there are also some stable features in the Earth's atmosphere, yet mostly chaos seems to rule. Is there then no hope for accurate weather forecasting? With advancing computer technology, it appears there might be a way now of determining in advance whether the atmosphere is going to be predictable or chaotic over the period of interest, and therefore whether the weather forecast is going to be reliable or not. And that is, um, instead of running a single weather forecast from a single set of initial data, we would run an ensemble, a, a set of forecasts in parallel from similar but not quite identical sets of initial data. If Tim Palmer's weather maps develop in similar ways, then he can conclude that that day's weather is in a predictable state and that his forecast will be reliable. But if the weather patterns diverge, then the forecast will inevitably be unreliable. Here are two nearly identical weather systems, each showing a blue low pressure center and a red high pressure. Once the computer begins to run its model forward, we can see that after 10 days, in both cases, the pattern of isobar lines have stayed in step, resulting in high pressure over southern Europe and low pressure over Scandinavia. And in both cases, the weather over the UK would be very similar. In this second run, again, the initial pictures are similar, but this time as the forecast is run forward, the right-hand map develops a strong low over the North Sea, while on the left, this low develops much further north. The final frame shows widely different pictures, suggesting that the initial weather state was unstable. The significance of Tim Palmer's work is that through chaos, he can now predict the limits of his predictions. Increasingly, chaos is teaching us what can and perhaps more importantly, what cannot be foretold. One of the main lessons that it teaches us is that we should be far more concerned and far more skeptical about the sort of long-term predictions and promises and forecasts which are offered to us about complex systems such as the environment and the economy. The environment is essentially the weather system and that is driven by the rotation of the Earth and the differential heating between the poles and the equator. And we're gradually changing that heating by the, the increasing pollution and the depletion of the ozone layer. Now one lesson we learn from dynamics is that as you change the underlying conditions of a dynamical system, in this case the, the heating, then you can cause the attractor of the dynamical system, in this case the, the climate, to suddenly disappear. And one gets a sudden jump from one attractor to another, in this case from one climate to another. And so you see how with a slow and gradual change in the underlying conditions, you can cause a sudden and abrupt jump in the state of the system, in the climate. And that in this case would be an environmental catastrophe.